Somebody asked me how I do the sketches for the animals I've been doing recently. They're kind of similar all of them in regards of the approach I do. But basically you need a pen, of course you need paper and you can use any sort of pen. And I have this great lighters, highlighters, a Stabilo Boss. So let's get right to it. Basically to start, one of the things I usually do or aim to do is what is called thumbnails. If you haven't heard of them, they're basically really small drawings that you use to put onto paper the idea that you have. With the pen, you can go really lightly first, do an overall shape of what you want to draw, and if you want to refine it later, you can go over it and make it darker. I like the pen because it allows you to get away with certain things once you're drawing even though the other aspect of me using this tool to draw is because you have to commit to what you're drawing. Whatever you put onto paper with a pen you that's not going anywhere so it's it's also about that becoming as confident as you can with your drawing for better or for worse and stick with what you intended to put on the paper for whatever reason the camera kept on going in and out of focus i'm sorry about that i'll see if i can fix it for future videos but if you see what I'm doing there, it kind of goes into the same that I just mentioned. You do the overall shape of what you want to represent and then you can go into further details if you want to and refine what you need to. The whole idea of doing thumbnails, as I said, is to represent ideas and you make it really small because it's a cheap way to think about the whole picture that allows you to do a, a few iterations or multiple iterations of an idea within a really short time frame and you can still select and choose which ones of those you would like to move forward with so if you're working on a pipeline that's a great way to clear out good ideas versus not that great ideas in terms of composition and shape language you can get a little bit of that on a thumbnail before you put a lot of resource and effort into it for this one same idea you do the overall shape and then if you want you can add details on top of it often if you see other artists doing thumbnails maybe you cannot really understand what is going on but it's about them representing the idea is for them to understand the shapes of what they're trying to draw This is another practice I usually do. Try to represent the page and kind of the bounds of what I want to draw. If I'm trying to do a specific composition, I try to keep it within certain bounds on the page. So if you want to try that out, that might help you. Sometimes I, I miss the mark and the character is too close to one of the edges of the page or I left a space that I don't really like but because I'm doing it with a pen I have to keep going and remember that it's not about that it's about the daily practice of the, the craft in my case or 
as consistently as I can. Now you're about to see me put a page on top of the thumbnails, that's um, a, a thing that I have, maybe some of you might have it. If I'm thinking about what is on that page, I cannot focus on the next one, so often if you see my sketches, I turn the page and just, just work one drawing per page because I'm still going back to the other idea. So if you see me here, I'm using the highlighter to add a background to the page. I really like the highlighter because it's not overpowering to the page, but it also adds, to me, I feel it adds a lot of energy and contrast that is what I wanted for my sketches. I've been doing those for a really long time. Now it's been like four, almost 400 of those if you check out my, my short videos. So I wanted to add some contrast, so I decided to add this to, to the process. And it, I enjoy the way it looks by the end. Besides, when I use color on my illustrations, I tend to use like more contrast or like really strong colors. So that's my take on it. If you see here, same idea as with the thumbnails. I'm working on the overall shape of the character. Sometimes it's a better idea to get references of what you're trying to do. Often with this sort of sketches, I'm mixing two ideas together. Uh, so it's usually uh, an animal with a uh, sport and I find reference of both and I try to mix them together. But in this case, because it's a character I draw a lot, I don't have to look for any references this is straight up and you can see me going lightly on the paper and that allows you to get away with certain things even though as I said whatever you put on the page with a pen is gonna stay there unless you decide to to mess up the page with one of those pen erasers there to me I, I don't like them but yeah that's the whole point of the exercise if you haven't tried this, I would encourage you to try it because I feel it makes you a better artist if you do it mindfully. If you're really thinking of what you're doing and why you're doing it, it can help you become better at your craft. Also, as I said about the overall shape, often I tend to break a drawing into components like a hand doesn't have to be a hand it can be a box or it can be a sphere or a triangle if you've seen other tutorials about this you probably heard this before not every artist approaches things this way but I have sort of this modeling background, so I think about objects in three dimensions. So that comes as something really natural for me. It's a matter of simply getting used to the way you're representing an idea on paper. Once you have the overall shape, you can go back and go over the line work that you did already and define it, make it pop that's basically what I'm doing now If you see the hands, they're right now they're kind of a blob, <laughs> but you can see there I'm going to refine 
the details on them if you need a reference for that you can find a reference for for the hands it's it's a matter of what works best for you somebody like Kim Jong-gi that has been an inspiration for me throughout the years I don't think he did <laughs> I'm not sure I there are certain I haven't seen all his work I've seen a lot of his work and he seems to have well he apparently did do like straight up drawings right out of his mind straight to paper without looking for reference just his mental reference library that is something that you practice along the way there are other artists like in my case I can sometimes I can just do it straight up just go right into a drawing and know exactly how to do it how to uh, represent it and where should everything go how I'm going to approach it but there's more specific things like for example if you're gonna draw a motorcycle that's a really complex machine so I would definitely go for a reference in that case because you're trying to like it, I don't want to be making up things onto onto a motorcycle even though maybe you can get away with it but if you want to be accurate of what you're representing you can go look for a reference and oh okay this the, the engine goes here this this is how that looks this is how this wiring comes out of the engine into to the steering wheel and yeah that's that's a process that each and every one of us have to go through to understand what works better for you maybe you have a great memory and you just have to see it something one time and you can just draw it from memory i purposely try to draw from memory a lot because that's what I want to reinforce on me like drawing from imagination but maybe that's not your your focus and you want to do other things the other aspect is that often because these are sketches that I do on a daily basis I'm trying to keep them as sketches I'm not trying to make them into illustrations to me there's a, a balance there that you each one have their own take on it but there needs to be a balance between the two maybe sometimes it gets gets blurred but yeah if i'm trying to get a sketch i'm not trying to refine the technique of how i'm shading the the eye in this case for example i'm just trying to get the idea across maybe make it pop as much as i can but i'm not worrying about oh is this this is gonna show up on the on the final it doesn't it doesn't register for a sketch like you're just trying to get the idea across that's the main focus it doesn't have to be super clean and refined uh, that there is also something that i enjoy about this sort of thing so if you saw me there i shaded the the eye if you take a close look into most of the eyes that you see around when the light hits it the lower rim of the eye gets a bounce of light which makes it lighter and if you do the shading the way i did it there on the eye it makes it feel more realistic more lifelike so yeah that's something that if you want to take it into account you can go and, and look at different references and you can confirm or mention that no he's totally wrong that's not <laughs> but yeah usually that's that's something really common that going back to the balance that i'm mentioning also the other thing is what are you trying to accomplish with the sketch do you want to define volumes of what you're drawing or you're focused on on the lighting because sometimes i feel like i mess up that aspect because sometimes I'm trying to define volumes versus actually lighting the scene in a way and so there might be in certain drawings I end up with conflicting light sources if, if you look into it a lot 
but my point is that's not my main focus my main focus is to transfer the idea that i had onto paper and make it as clear as i can so it's up to you how you want to approach that also if you haven't already consider subscribing if you would like to help support this channel that's a great way to do it i also have merch with my illustrations on it it's i i like to think there's more refined than what you see me doing on, on my sketches but you can check it out on down on the links below i also have my website where i've added some of the projects i worked as an artist yeah i also do client work if you're interested i don't know if somebody that might be interested in working with an artist would be watching this sort of video because it's more oriented towards people that are just trying to learn how to draw or they want to see the process i, I use to do the things i do but that you can find it there on the links i also have my illustrated deck of cards so you can see right there on the top cartas a venezuela i made that deck of cards i illustrated the whole thing and it's printed by USPCC. Those are quality decks of cards. And yeah, I'm really happy with the project. So if you want to check that out, you can find it there. Here, I'm, I believe I'm really close to the finish line with the drawing. I wanted to make this video real time because uh, for you guys or gals or whoever is watching, the video to have an idea of how much time this drawings take sometimes it can take longer sometimes it can take a shorter amount of time but so you can get an idea of, of the time frame if you have any questions about the stuff i do or anything related to drawing or art feel free to add them on the on the comments down below and i'll read through them I aim to to address them on my videos and on my shorts so I appreciate you being here if you ask any questions it's awesome it helps the algorithm and it helps me continue to make videos the reason I make chihuires or capybaras is because I I'm from a place where these animals are really common. Well, actually my ancestors are from a place that those creatures are really common. And I also enjoy the vibe that they put out. They're really calm and peaceful and zen. So I really appreciate those creatures. So I like to represent them in my work. Besides, it's also where I come from, Chihuire is used sometimes as a insult, sometimes it can be an endearing term. It depends on the context, but it's really intertwined with our culture. So that's why we use them or we represent them in different ways. I'm actually curious of what do you think would should be my next video about? What are you interested in hearing about or seeing that I haven't made a video about in regards to illustration or creative work. I actually made a video about creative work recently. Uh, so I'm curious about how many people that I have on my subscribers are actually creative people already or they're beginners. If you want to add that into the comments, that'd be awesome. If you put beginner, I can get an idea. If you're a beginner, mid-level, advanced, art director. <laughs> I don't know, whoever's watching. Here I'm almost done with the idea. I kept on thinking about that scene on, I think it's Most Wanted, that one of the characters breaks through a wall onto something else, through a window rather, onto something else. I think it falls on a car or a train or something. So I kept on thinking of that and I wanted to represent that a little bit here on the sketch. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Then here I'm adding with a Posca marker some highlights. It works best if you have like if you have a really dark background on the page or you want to bring back some highlights. It works really well. I cannot recommend those markers enough. Those are acrylic markers and they work awesome. And you have to be mindful of, of like you have to check them and sort of 
ideally take care of them but i don't i don't think i i take too too much care but they're really good markers they work excellent for for this sort of thing they they have different tips sometimes it, that one i just showed is a really thin one that you can get so check that out if you want if you saw the video up to this point thank you for watching i really hope to see you next time i tried this format that is longer than usual maybe the algorithm helps me or you guys help me if you watch the entire thing if you haven't already consider subscribing thank you for being here hope to see you next time bye